Operations with decimals. In our first review lesson for pre-algebra, that is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be getting tongue-tied already. We're going to be talking about adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing decimals. This ought to be a short one, but let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and dive on in. So let's just start by talking about, um, well, I say adding and subtracting. We're going to talk about that briefly. I'm just going to talk about one, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to do, well, no, you know, words. We're going to add and subtract decimals. And the first, like, we're going to jump in with examples. And you're going to see as we continue this course that many times we're going to jump straight in with examples because that's the easiest and quickest way to get the concept across is to just practice it. Okay, so... We're going to do the same thing here. This should be theoretically review, but it may not be. That's one of the reasons why we do some review sections. So example number one is going to be 8.9 plus 7.61. Okay. So when we're going to add these, we're going to do it the old fashioned way, right? At the beginning of pre-algebra for the, about the first half or so, we don't use calculators, right? And so we're going to be doing this kind of the old fashioned way. And so what we do is we stack it. Now when we're doing addition and subtraction, it's important that we keep these decimal points lined up. Okay. So that's, that's what we need to do on addition and subtraction. It's the rules are a little different on multiplication and division, but on addition and subtraction, we line them up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stack them. And we're going to put the I like to be in the habit of putting the larger number numerically on top and the smaller number on bottom uh, when we do these. Uh, that's going to help us whenever we get to doing integers and we're trying to think about signs and all those kind of things. You don't technically have to. Um, you can do it. You can do it another way. Um, you can put the smaller number on top. Um, actually, even when you're doing subtraction, but that's a little bit tricky and sneaky and whatever else. And we'll we'll talk more about that in a, a few chapters from now. So eight point nine plus seven point six one. Now sometimes remember whenever we're adding and subtracting decimals, you may end up with a situation like this where you have an empty space. So in order to help us remember what goes in those empty spaces, we're gonna stick a zero there because 8.9 is the same as 8.90. And then we're just gonna add just like we've been doing for a really long time, right? So zero plus one is one, nine plus six is 15. So we put the little one up here. And we put the five down here. We remember to bring down our decimal place. <clears throat> and then one plus eight is nine plus seven is 16. So the answer to that one is 16.51. Hopefully you're like, oh my gosh, this is easy. I've been doing this for a long time. But if not, that's all we do to add decimals. Um, we'll, we'll do one example of subtraction. We'll probably go through it a little bit faster because it's the same way. Let's subtract um, 12.12 minus 4.8. Okay, so we're going to put the larger number on top, right? So we're going to put 12.12 up here, and then minus... And then keep that decimal place lined up. So 4.8. Easy peasy, right? So we can add zeros where in the places where it doesn't match. This leading one especially is kind of like, eh, does it matter? I don't know. But it's it just it's just to keep everything lined up and neat and all those kind of things. If you don't add leading zeros on these, I'm if you're in my class, I'm not gonna really holler at you on your homework or a test or whatever. But it's just a good idea. So two minus zero, that we can do. So we're going to write a two. Now we can't take away eight from one. So what do we do? We got to borrow. So we're going to borrow from the two, turn it into a one, and turn this one into an 11. 11 minus eight is three. Make sure our decimal points stay lined up. We can't take away uh, one from four from one. So we're going to borrow again, turning this into a zero and this one into an 11. 11, 
excuse me, 11 minus four is seven and zero minus zero is still just zero. So we've got our answer right there. No problemo. Let's look at a couple examples of multiplication or an example of multiplication, an example of division, and then we'll call it quits for this video. Okay, so our multiplication example is going to be, this is example three, and it's gonna be 4.5 times 2.7. Now, technically, for multiplication, you don't have to worry about making the decimal points line up, right? And uh, see, I think I have, yeah, I'll do another example here in a second of one kind of illustrating that. Uh, I, w I think we're going to end up getting extra an uh, extra example because of it. Um, so we're going to stack them, right? And so we're going to stay in the habit of putting the bigger one on top, right? So we're going to do 4.5 times 2.7. Now, with multiplication in particular, the way we handle the decimal is we don't do anything with it until the very end. So now we just got, we just treat this like it's any old two digit multiplication, right? So five times seven is 35. And then seven times four is 28 plus three is 31. So we've finished this seven, we're going to the next digit. So we're gonna scratch this off and we're gonna make sure and add a zero. If for whatever reason you are, I've found uh, in the last year that uh, there's some uh, students, actually my own children, <laughs> some of them uh, were not adding the zero, please do that. Cause if your handwriting is, is a little bit off or whatever, or really big or large or whatever, then if you don't do that, you're liable to make mistakes. So make sure you add that zero, okay? So two times five is 10. So one up here and a zero down here. Two times four is eight plus one is nine. So then just like any other two digit multiplication, we're going to add these. So five plus zero is five. One plus zero is one. Nine plus three is 12. Now, since we're doing decimals, what we have to do now is we have to figure out how many times to move our decimal place over. And so this is how we do it. We take a look at each one of the numbers that we're multiplying and we see how many times each one of those is moved over. So see this one, the decimal place is moved over once, right? This one, the decimal place is moved over once. So we add those two numbers. One plus one is two, right? And so we're gonna move our and so we're gonna move the decimal place over twice. And so our final answer here is twelve point one five. That's a little bit little bit tricky and a little bit weird. And I want to show the example of the not necessarily having to line them up. So let me grab another example. Let's do this one. This is gonna be example four. Example four, we're going to do 21.5 times 4.9. Okay, so we're going to stack them again. Now, in this case, we don't necessarily, and it, Kind of doesn't matter, but we're not going to worry about lining up the decimal place. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So we're going to put the bigger number on top. So 21.5 times, oh, the decimal place does line up. I wasn't even, I wasn't even looking good. That's what happens when you do certain things on the fly. So the decimal place does line up, but we're, we're leaving the space over here is basically what I'm getting at. So say this was... 21 times 4.9, then the decimal wouldn't line up because we'd put the 4.9 just straight under. Um, it doesn't really matter because you treat it the same way. So just like we did on this other example, we're going to do it the same way. So we're going to multiply the nines, the tenths digit in this case first. So we're going to do nine times five, which is 45. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 4 is 13. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 1 is 19. So again, we don't worry about the decimal place. We're going to deal with that at the very end. 
So we've done this digit, so we're gonna scratch that and we're gonna remember to add that zero. Four times five is 20. Four times one is four, plus two is six. Four times two is eight. So we're gonna add those up just like we always do with multi-digit uh, with multi-digit multiplication. So five plus heart, since my zero turned into a heart, but five plus zero is five. Three plus zero is still three. Uh, nine plus six is 15. One plus one is two, plus eight is 10. So now we're gonna take a look and just like before, we're moving over once, twice, right? So once and twice, right? So then we're gonna copy down our answer, 105.35. A good idea to know if you've done this right is to go back to our old, does that answer make sense, right? That's a old, that's a great standby and whatever else. So. 20 times 4 is 100, right? So 21.5 times 4.9 being a little bit more than 100, that makes total sense. So this works out really great. Let's do one example of, <coughs> excuse me, of division, and then we're going to be done with this lesson. So let's do example number, what? Example number 5. Yeah, 5. Example number 5. Let's divide 0 0.086 divided by 0 0.04, okay? So if we make this into the little house type notation, right? The 0 0.04 is gonna be on the porch and then the 0 0.086 is going to be under the in the house, right? So we have a problem. We can't go on yet because in order to divide numbers, in order to divide decimals, we cannot have the dividend be a decimal. So what we got to do is we got to move this decimal place over. And if we move this decimal place over, we've got to move this one too. So in order to get this to be a whole number, we've got to move the decimal once, twice. And if we move that one twice, we're going to have to move this one once, twice as well. So this turns into 4 divided into 86, right? 4 goes in now. I'm getting ahead of myself. And now we just got a really simple integer division problem. Y'all don't even know what the word integer means probably yet, but you will soon. Okay, so four goes into eight twice. Two times four is eight. We subtract, eight minus eight is zero. We bring down the six. Four goes into six once, four. We're gonna subtract. Bring down uh, four, six minus four is two. Now, what we need to do now is because we started with decimals, we want to end with decimals. Now, this may for some of you be something new, right? So, if we want to keep going, if we don't want remainder, blah, 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 right? Or some or fraction notation or whatever else, we need to add zeros after the decimal. So, we're going to put a decimal place and a zero. And we're going to, before we forget, we're going to float that decimal up here, right? Hope you remember this. Hope this is, this is not brand new for you. But either way, we're good to go. Four goes into 20 five times. Five times four is 20. Now, some of you are, if this is pretty new to you, are thinking, well, how do I know how many zeros to add? How, where do I know how to stop? Well, one of two things is going to happen. At this point in the course, it's going to come out pretty like this one does. But, <coughs> excuse me, as we continue, it may tell you round to the nearest hundredths place, right? And so you would stop there or you'd stop one beyond so you know where to round up or down or whatever. But a lot of the time, especially right now, we're going to know when to stop because... 
you're going to get a zero right here. Once we get a zero right here, then we know we're finished. And we can circle or box our answer and we can move on with our life. So that is our review and our reminder for operations with decimals. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're in my class, don't forget to do your homework. This is probably the first homework you've done for me all year. I look forward to seeing you in class. If you're not one of my students, thanks for joining us. I hope this was useful to you. Everybody, my student or otherwise, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe. That'd be really great. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.